it's almost insane. Look at the uh, oh. tulips are coming up. Or oh, no, crocuses. Crocus. Yeah. yeah. How much of this was, is recognizable? Only that. Really? That was here. None of that was over there. So I mean, what's really the same are the walkways, the green. It's such a beautiful campus. Hi, KGW. It's interesting because we, as Oregonians, we, we claim you. But you were born in Guam. Correct. So military family, grew up career military all over the world. I was a brat, a Navy brat, and we settled in Ashland, Oregon. So what do you call home? Here. I mean, I call Oregon home because it's the place I stayed the longest. It was one of the most formative, if not the most formative place in my life. I went to high school here. I went to college here. My first jobs were in Medford and, and then in Portland. I spent a lot of years here. But this was a place where I stayed for a while. And um, there is something about the mm, altruistic, I think, community focus message uh, that you learn in Oregon. Uh, this is a place where it's not about, what's good for, for all of us is good for me. In some places in the world is what's good for me is good for me. Right. And, and this place is special in that manner. And I've never lost that. And I think that as a result, it's probably been the most, if not one of the most formative places I've ever lived. We, my dad and I used to watch Walter Cronkite every night. And we were learning about, you know, the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement and the Women's Liberation Movement and, you know, um, um, it just was at a, a Watergate, very intense time. I realized that there was a calling, there was something that I might be able to do. I might be able to, as a storyteller, as a writer, as a, as a person who wanted to be a journalist, I might be able to stand up for others with truth. I came to the University of Oregon, uh, the only school I ever applied to. Um, didn't actually ever think I was going to go to college, um, but because no one in my family ever had. I mean, my father was at that time going, just beginning college on the GI Bill, uh, and no one in our family on either side had ever gone to college. I'm excited to see what I'm going to see on the stage at the Colorado Auditorium. Have you been involved with TED uh, conferences before? No, this is my first. Your, your talk is going to be about truth and, and trust. It's, the, the, the theme is, is, is bridges and that, that duality, the either side of the bridge. None of us is ever a success. None of us is ever able to have um, a life that uh, we may look back on and, and feel some proud pride about without others. We need others to encourage us to, 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 to say the words um, sometimes it's a comforting hug, something that, that lets us rise. We need each other. And in our series, what we're doing is we're talking about world-changing events. You know, wor world, you know World War, um, uh, Mount St. Helens, uh, Civil Rights Movement, uh, and how people who are caught, everyday Americans who are caught in these events, can rise from these events. And almost always it's because of someone else who helped them survive emotionally or physically. It's actually been a great privilege, actually, to take this raw idea and try to make it powerful. And, and I think sometimes what you see is um, what's possible. The greatness is possible in all of us. It's one we share. And thank you. You bet. Fun to talk to you. I truly yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, it was fun. Now, Anne's new series, We'll Meet Again, can be seen on PBS. And you can hear her speak at TEDx Portland on April 21st at the Keller Auditorium. Or if you just can't wait that long, you can see the full version of my interview with Anne at KGW.com. Trust and truth, right? The topic yeah, that's appropriate, exactly. right? Hearing you speak and interview and watching the piece, it seemed like you really genuinely enjoyed speaking with Anne. She's, she's such a genuine person. And, yeah. and I can say that in an hour, I learned so much from her about her experience in this industry, about uh, how you interact with other people, about yeah. human interactions. But there is one thing that I can say that I think I taught her. And if you stick around at five o'clock, you can find <laughs> out what that piece is. Just one thing, I only taught Just her one thing. She taught me all sorts yeah, of yeah, stuff yeah. in an hour. I taught her one thing. Well, I'm piece. sensing mutual admiration, and I'm betting yeah. she was a football fan, watched you, you play. Know she was. So you probably taught her something about football. Just a guess. Well, Am that, I that's very kind in of the right you. Realm? <laughs> let's see, let's see. World reporting from, from war zones, <laughs> yeah, playing right. our football field. I think there's there a little are some difference there. There's things that duck football trumps, Joey. You ought to know that by now. All right.